Today, we're diving into a classic shortest path algorithm, Dijkstra's algorithm. It's widely used in map navigation, network routing, and path planning. If you want an efficient way to find the shortest path between two points, Dijkstra's algorithm is an essential tool to know. The story behind this algorithm is pretty interesting. In 1956, computer scientist Edsger Dijkstra came up with its core idea in under 20 minutes while sitting in a cafe in the Netherlands. His goal was to find the shortest paths from a starting point to all other points, similar to how we look for the fastest route on a map. The algorithm follows a greedy approach with dynamic updates. It expands the node with the shortest known distance first, continuously updating its neighbors until all reachable nodes have been processed. Let's break it down with a visual example. On the screen, you see a weighted graph with six nodes, A, B, C, D, E, and F. Each edge represents a connection between two nodes, with a number indicating the distance. For example, the distance from A to B is 4, and from C to E is 3. Our goal is to find the shortest path from A to F using Dijkstra's algorithm. First, we set up a table to keep track of three key pieces of information. The first column lists all nodes. The second column records the shortest known distance from A to each node. At the start, A's distance is zero, while all other nodes are set to infinity, indicating that their shortest paths are still unknown. The third column stores each node's predecessor, which helps us reconstruct the shortest path later. Initially, all predecessors are empty. To efficiently determine which node to process next, we use a priority queue, one of the key structures in this algorithm. It keeps track of nodes along with their current shortest distance from A. The algorithm continuously extracts the node with the shortest known distance, updates its neighboring nodes, and reinserts them into the queue if their shortest distance improves. This process repeats until all reachable nodes have been processed. So, what exactly is a priority queue? Simply put, it's a data structure that automatically orders elements based on priority as they are inserted. In our case, the smaller the distance, the higher the priority. A common implementation is a binary heap, which allows us to efficiently extract the smallest element. Now, let's walk through Dijkstra's algorithm step-by-step step to see how it works in action. We start at node A, adding it to the priority queue with a distance of zero. The queue now contains zero A. Next, we extract A and examine its neighbors. A is connected to B with a distance of 4 and to C with a distance of 5. Since these are the first known paths to B and C, we update their shortest distances and set A as their predecessor. We then push 4B and 5C into the queue. Finally, we mark A as processed. The priority queue now contains 4B and 5C. Since B has the shorter distance, we process B next. B is connected to A, C, D, and E. Since A is already processed, we skip it. For C, the shortest known path from A is 5, but going through B would cost 4 plus 11 equals 15, which is worse, so we don't update C. For D, reaching it through B costs 4 plus 9 equals 13, which is better than infinity, so we update D's shortest distance to 13, set B as its predecessor, and push 13D into the queue. Similarly, reaching E through B costs 4 plus 7 equals 11, so we update E's shortest distance to 11, set B as its predecessor, and push 11E into the queue. Finally, we mark B as processed. Now the priority queue contains 5C, 11E, and 13D. The next shortest node is C, so we process it next. C is connected to A, B, and E. Since A and B have already been processed, we skip them. For E, going through C costs 5 plus 3 equals 8, which is better than the current shortest distance of 11. So, we update E's distance to 8, set C as its predecessor, and push 8E into the queue. Finally, we mark C as processed. The priority queue now contains 8E, 11E, and 13D. The shortest node is E, so we process it next. E is connected to B, C, D, and F. Since B and C have already been processed, we skip them. For D, going through E costs 8 plus 13 equals 21, 
which is worse than the current shortest distance of 13, so we don't update it. For f, going through e cost 8 plus 6 equals 14, which is better than infinity. So we update f's shortest distance to 14, set e as its predecessor, and push 14f into the queue. Finally, we mark e as processed. The priority queue now contains 11e, 13d, and 14f. Since e has already been processed, we skip it. The next shortest node is d, so we process it. d is connected to b, e, and f. Since b and e have already been processed, we skip them. For f, going through d costs 13 plus 2 equals 15, which is worse than the current shortest distance of 14, so we don't update it. Finally, we mark D as processed. Now, the only remaining node in the queue is F. We process it, but since all its neighbors are already processed, nothing changes. F is now marked as processed, and the algorithm is complete. At the end, we determine that the shortest distance from A to F is 14. To reconstruct the shortest path, we backtrack using the predecessor table. F's predecessor is E, E's predecessor is C, and C's predecessor is A. So the shortest path is A to C to E to F, with a total distance of 14. In summary, Dijkstra's algorithm works by expanding the shortest known paths using a priority queue, dynamically updating the shortest distances to neighboring nodes, and ultimately finding the shortest path from the starting point to all other nodes. Here's a Python implementation of Dijkstra's algorithm. First, we initialize a dictionary to store the shortest distance from the starting node to all other nodes, setting all distances to infinity except for the starting node, which is set to zero. Another dictionary keeps track of each node's predecessor, which will help us reconstruct the shortest path later. We use Python's heap queue to implement the priority queue as a min heap. The queue initially contains only the starting node with a distance of zero. The algorithm continues looping through the priority queue, always extracting the node with the smallest known distance. If a shorter path to any of its neighbors is found, we update their distances and add them back to the queue if needed. To optimize performance, if a node is extracted with a distance greater than its recorded shortest distance, we simply skip it. Finally, the algorithm returns two dictionaries, one with the shortest distances and another with predecessors, allowing us to reconstruct the shortest path. This is the adjacency list representation of the graph, corresponding to the example we demonstrated earlier. This method reconstructs the shortest path from the start to the destination by backtracking through the predecessor dictionary. In terms of time complexity, if a binary heap is used, each insertion and extraction takes O log V. With an optimization for duplicate key updates, also known as the decrease key operation, the algorithm guarantees that each node is extracted only once, resulting in O V log V. Processing all edges contributes O E log V, leading to an overall time complexity of O E plus V log V. If a Fibonacci heap is used, the time complexity improves to O E plus V log V, which is particularly efficient for sparse graphs. Dijkstra's algorithm does not work with graphs containing negative edge weights. If negative weights are present, the Bellman-Ford algorithm should be used instead, which we will cover in a future video. That's it for today. I hope this video helped you understand Dijkstra's algorithm. If you found it useful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share your thoughts in the comments. See you next time.